today, I'm pleased to bring you Bjorn Ekeberg. He is tuning in all the way from Oslo, Sweden. Uh, fascinating guy. He has a PhD in philosophy of science. Um, he's written on physics and cosmology. I have actually watched some of his stuff on YouTube before and didn't realize that and then make the connection to Flexbeam, which we're going to be talking about until I started watching some of his things on YouTube. I was like, wait, I know this guy. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, really excited to have him come talk to you guys today about red light therapy and near infrared spectrums. I have become a fan. It took me a long time to become a fan. Not going to lie. <laughs> As we talk about, I've been a little, I'm always a little skeptical. I'm always a little skeptical. I, I think that's a healthy way to be. And so um, anyway, when uh, Flexbeam reached out to me, I was like, sure, let's talk about it. Um, always looking for any option that I can to help you optimize your health. So um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get into it. He's going to get into the science of red light therapy and near infrared, and we'll um, educate you on ways you can use it. I like their device because it's like when they call it flex beam for a reason, it's like this flexible thing that you can like, you know, wrap around your shoulder or around your knee or, you know, and so it's a, it's a great, great device. I highly recommend. We'll go ahead and link up in the show notes, their website. Um, they did give me a $60 off coupon to share with you guys. It's coach Tara. So we'll link that. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Here is Bjorn Ekeberg. Okay. So Bjorn, I didn't tell you this before we started, but when I started looking up some of your YouTube videos to, about flex beam in preparation for this, I noticed I had watched a whole bunch of your videos on YouTube already. They were like finished because you are a philosopher of science, correct? And I was like, oh, wow, I've already kind of deep dived on some of this guy's stuff. Um, and so maybe we can hit a little bit if you want, you know, anything you want to share on that towards the end. But um, I want it because it's, pretty awesome. I don't know if I can hang with you on, <laughs> on those conversations, but we'll see if they go there. But I wanted to no. kick it off. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, honestly, I'm just sitting here and calculating the fluke of you having watched both that content and the, you know, red light therapy, infrared stuff that we're going to talk about, because it's not exactly mainstream, either of them. But uh, I'm very right. happy. To, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Yeah, I, I definitely am a, a curious mind. And that kind of segues us into Flexbeam, which is a red light and near infrared device, because I would say the the approach that I have, especially in the biohacking health optimization type world, is very curious and very skeptical. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, I've been going to these conferences and in this world for a long time, and there's a lot of devices, there's a lot of things you could spend your money on, there's a lot of passionate people. And I know they're like, this will help everybody. But I'm like, mm, okay, well, hold on, I'm gonna have to dig a little deeper. And and red light was one of those things for me for a long time back when like juve hit the market, and they were just going ham. And I was kind of like, well, yeah, but what exactly does it do? And, and where's the proof? And, you know, and then I started seeing that people were going to red light booths at tanning salons. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. You know, so I kind of went on this like very guarded, I would say, mm -hmm. journey with red light. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a super fan. <laughs> so that brings us here today. Just to let you guys know, I'm not just like, oh yeah, whatever people say is good is good. I've really, really like, given this one a test and I have to say I'm an avid supporter. And so with that, I'm wondering if you could kind of share, I mean, I guess just real quickly, like what got you turned? Cause you're, I mean, you're deep in philosophical scientific, you know, where are we going with science in the world? If you, you know, like thinking outside of the box and you landed here with red light. So what brought you here first? And then we'll get into some of the actual benefits and what it does. Yeah, uh, I love the curious and skeptical combination, I have to say. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, it's actually 10 years ago now since I sort of discovered the whole biohacking space and read up and studied and all of this stuff on the side. So it's been it's been an interesting uh, journey and I made a lot of the same observations. And I'm like, <laughs> I was also very skeptical when um, this kind of came my way. Mm -hmm. is what happened. I have a background as philosopher of science and also some filmmaking and other stuff uh, that doesn't really cross directly into now leading a company that's trying to make the sort of next generation red light therapy device. Mm -hmm. uh, but I happen to know some uh, two guys that had co-founded a business. They had discovered NASA technology redeveloped uh, like through all the research they've come across the physiological benefits that are like 
completely documented on near infrared light and red light wavelengths. And they were blown away and they had the capacity to actually design a device like they were hardware manufacturing people in Asia, like good in supply chain, all of that stuff. So I knew them from before um, and they told shared me this project. And we had a doctor involved who's worked for 20 years with this kind of technology and just has a mission, you know, to just be like, I want this in every home, not just for it's great that it's for, you know, some people who really read up online and they buy their own thing. But we want to like, you, if you're going to take this to the people and make everyone experience it, you have to have a product or you have to have an application of this product that's so easy to use and so easy to understand, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we set out to do when I discovered it. So I was also skeptical and it took me a while to sort of, mm -hmm. I remember the first prototypes of FlexBeam, even like testing it. And I was kind of frustrated because I couldn't immediately feel it. Mm, right you're because like it's, oh, it's more BS. subtle kind of thing yeah yeah <laughs> right. but it's just like all, all the time wrestling with but yeah uh, clearly having bought it <laughs> uh -huh. and now wanting to sort of sell it or show it to people you know that this is something you know it's for i think a broader group of people than a lot of people who listen to this show but this is uh this i think there's a long way there still mm -hmm. that it's something is happening yeah, I think for me, like when I started to dive into just red light on its own at first back in, I don't know, probably 2017 was when I really started kind of, I was like, wait, so it's just like for your skin. I mean, that's cool. But like, meh. like that's where I was at. But now there's so much more like actually I pulled up. Uh, PubMed and search red light just before mm -hmm. this um, with, you know, in quotation. So it stays together. And there are, as of today, 9,378 results on PubMed when you search for red light. So like, yeah. And if you add photobiomodulation and you add low level laser therapy, which are some of the terms used before you get to 16,000. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's and like, it's a, massive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot mm -hmm. here. And yeah. uh, Red lights. Um, I, I mean, I found more, I found more applications for red light than I thought. I thought, oh, it's just gonna make your skin pretty or whatever. But I started, I broke a toe recently and I started going on a deep dive with right. red light and near infrared with bone healing. And there's a lot there because of the energy, the uh, giving energy. Can you talk about some of that? Some of the, I guess, science backed benefits of red light and near infrared? Yeah, sure. And I mean, that's, um, that ties in also with the bigger story, I think, of, you know, energy and like what actually happens yeah. Yeah. Uh, at that level, which sort of amazed me. And I think my skeptical mind, maybe like yours, we're all very conditioned to um, all the most basic stuff. I mean, this mm -hmm. podcast called Inside Out Health, right? And it's really like deep diving into the cellular structure and all the grounding things and materials. But really the source of all of this what is the most if not basic because that's sort of grounded but it's most essential is light right mm -hmm. the most essential thing that surrounds us the most essential thing for all of life for the food we eat and the animals and ourselves we don't live without light mm -hmm. uh, but we barely give it a thought other than <laughs> on very specific things that if some frequencies are harmful or some right like, you know, vitamin D is like our connection with the sun or something like this, right? That's it. Just the yeah. just vitamin D. And yeah, you're right. It hits more on like harm. Like we don't no. appreciate light, like we, it, which is crazy. You know, it's just like we only think about the harmful things it can do. And it's like, thank you. Okay. I'll let yeah. you continue. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> and I, like in a way, I think we all actually do appreciate it at the base. If I'm just right. reflecting on it now, it's just that we don't have the, the vocabulary we have mm -hmm. to express our relationship with the sun and the way we're conditioned to think about the energy that surrounds us and light and the cycle of Earth, like basically the circadian rhythm of how Earth sort of turns around with the sun. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about or think about it. I think we really do appreciate it if you wake up and it's like yeah. a beautiful sunrise. And it's not right. just that it looks pretty. It also feels good. Mm -hmm. And that some of that feeling, uh, it's like some of the glow that you feel from a sunrise, something like this also has to do with this infrared part of the spectrum, which we can talk more about. But nice. that's like, that's mm -hmm. a particular part of the spectrum that actually it's like it warms you, it goes through the skin is not just that, oh, it's a nice red on that mm -hmm. sunset. Mm -hmm. um, so I think our feeling, I think we are more deeply connected than we think we are. And sometimes maybe our minds get in the way. Uh, and I think that was sort of the revelation for me, uh, 
when I met these people and I had my curious, skeptical sort of introduction into this uh, is realizing, and this comes with a bit of the philosopher science hat on, is that this is a paradigm shift in terms of how we think. Like if there's a paradigm shift underway that you are a big yeah. part of about how we approach our health mm -hmm. already. And I was sort of listening into that space while working on other stuff like learning biohacking. Mm -hmm. But this bigger paradigm of like what are the these key conditions that affect our health and our well-being that we just completely take for granted and some of the most you know essential remedies that you could find are not the ones that your doctor is telling you you should take or do right yeah. um so it kind of blew my mind a little bit like how you described as well and you realize that well this is really much more powerful that light can do all these things and that there are specific wavelengths of light that have these like really interesting and pronounced effects on the body. So I was fascinated and kind of pulled in to, you know, starting just to help out. And it became more and more of sort of like, you know, have to take it to market. How do you tell the story to people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think one of the, you pointed on it, like we we're just talking about how you approached it. And there were so many possible benefits that made you skeptical, right? Like, like it is sounds it, like, like it's is a it really right? Like, oh, yeah. okay, <laughs> right? It does all these Prove things. It. It's like, <laughs> I remember looking at marketing for like, I mean, from Juve to all the other sort of panel mm -hmm. companies that are out there, and just looking at how red light therapy is like how it's usually messaged or communicated. Mm -hmm. There is so much. So it sounds like you're on one of those, uh, like in the US, you have infomercials, right? Yes. And, and like wait, there's products. more. <laughs> there's more. Yeah. It's like so much more. And did you know? And you can also do this. And, you know, yeah. like you can iron your shirts as well. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, and that makes it less credible in a way. And I think if you're actually going to try to convey the story to people about this, you uh, have to be a little more targeted in your approach in a way. And you can't just claim that it does wonders mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, because the people who adopt it now are the ones who are, uh, I would say, very generally speaking, more rational, like that you can be more rationally minded, that you can mm -hmm. be if you're like really into biohacking, you're one of these people who can say, oh, I just realized this would be better for me if I do X. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And then, okay, I'll just change my routine and I'll just do that. Okay, and it works. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, 90% or whatever large number of the population not really don't really behave like that. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily adopt something new just because they read about it somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. it takes a certain kind of person to be like, mm -hmm. wow, all these benefits and like, wow, this is great. I'm just going to set the panel up in my garage and like right. start doing it. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so I think we're somewhere there where it's still an early adopter, like yeah. it's a discovery, it's a real thing, but it hasn't actually gone more widely and in, in part it's because it's it's still like kind of impractical you have to learn a lot you have to do i mean there's all these blocks on education i think mm -hmm. you know that, yeah uh, around it. well and it, even for those you know maybe 10 percent of people like they're not going to go drop i don't care even if it's 300 dollars up to two thousand dollars without knowing why right and so let's get into okay. that a little bit like let's yeah. um Maybe um, specify between red light and near infrared. Can you talk about some of the benefits and quick side note also like a lot of the research that I was reading when I broke my toe was like different right. nanometers, different wavelengths had had more success with certain applications than others. So I was just curious which wavelength you use in your near infrared also. So kind of just let's start with red light. Or yeah, for sure. And okay. let's try to tie it into your toe okay. and I'll try to get down. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. But uh, um, because I, we, we didn't get to that, but um, red and near infrared, this is within the visible and the invisible spectrum. So it's right. Red is that color of light on the visible spectrum that we can still see, but it's the furthest out in terms of wavelength. That's the longest wavelength that we can see. And then there's a whole spectrum, a very wide spectrum that's called infrared. And it goes... Uh, beyond infrared as well but that's invisible so we literally can't see it so near infrared sits right on the sort of the border of red you can't see it anymore um but it's out between 800 and 880 nanometers seems to be what's most studied there's a spectrum uh there's a lot of 850 uh has to do with you know they're just more 850 bulbs to put in these devices uh we currently use 815 to 850 sweeping but anything in the okay. 800 to 880 
range okay. show similar benefits. Mm -hmm. And then in the red spectrum, uh, which is then visible, uh, that's usually between 600 and 660. Uh, our device is 625 to 635 sweeping in a spectrum uh, on that. Uh, and the main difference is really has to do with penetration. Mm -hmm. I would say the depth that you can, like how far underneath the skin you can go. So near infrared will go quite deeply into the skin. The red light will penetrate it and go into the, sort of the epidermis. Like it's really good for collagen production, stimulating el elastin. Mm -hmm. Like all kinds of skin conditions are very favorably treated with red light. Uh, and I think you'll see there's kind of a, actually the term red light therapy, I think, unfortunately, from my point of view, is kind of being hijacked right now by cosmetics. Yeah. in a way, because there's so many cosmetic applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, these sort of, you know, face masks and lamps that you can buy, they tend to be low wattage and low output, because you don't necessarily need so much just at the surface of the skin. Mm. Right. Um, but if you actually really want to uh, treat yourself sort of more deeply, you need a more powerful red and you need infrared to sort of get underneath the skin. So if you're like healing a wound, for example, one thing is just the surface layer, but you mm -hmm. want to get, you know, more deeply into it. And that's the unique, this combination of red and near infrared, you will find in a lot of uh, panels and bulbs on the market uh, and that are shown sort of consistently to be, mm -hmm. be the most effective combination. There are other interesting wavelengths as well, but these are the two common ones. Um, and in our product, we let you vary between whether you want more red or more infrared or just the same amount of both so you can mm. do a treatment that's more skin focused cool. you can get more benefits from the red light but uh when you want to go deep tissue or you mm -hmm. you know you really injured yourself at the gym you want to go deep and then it's mostly infrared right mm. um, and then <clears throat> kind of describing the actual device flex beam for people who you know aren't seeing it right now maybe they're listening on audio can yeah. you oh he's got it's, it on video if you guys want to watch on youtube but also could you just maybe kind of describe it a little bit absolutely i was on a show where the like it was a texan host who said that looks like an ammo belt <laughs> and i guess in a way it does it's a belt so it comes with um easy to use other velcro straps so you can strap it onto any kind of body part it's made in part with a like it's a special sort of silicone contraption that holds light pods together so that it can twist and twirl and bend in any kind of direction. Um, so it covers uh, an area that would sort of be for, I don't know, the average person, like the smaller your back, along your back or over your stomach um, mm -hmm. or something. Three light pods that can also then curl around, so to speak. And mm -hmm. uh, like our idea when we sort of got this whole thing started, it was looking at what devices are out there and seeing that they're all pretty much stationary and they require distance. You don't really want to stand and like, I mean, stick your forehead or your torso right onto the lights necessarily. There's also a lot of electromagnetic frequency radiation. Mm -hmm. Like you usually stand at a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing though, is that if you stand at a distance, like already at four or five inches away, you have lost 80, 90% of the energy that comes. Okay from a panel or from any kind of light source. So like our chief engineer who invented this product, that was his first insight is like, you have to make something that goes straight on the skin mm -hmm. and that's encased in such a way so you can have it right on the skin and you won't lose any effect. I see. So this, this guy here has the same output in the same area as a, like a high grade panel, but it's like, you can actually wear it straight on. And nice. so if you have a knee or an elbow or shoulder, something that curves, you can put it around and you get, you get mm -hmm. light from three different angles, right? Nice. At the same time. So you could actually like get into a joint, like a knee joint or an elbow in a way that you can't really, if you're just at a flat surface. Um, so that was like the main principle in like how we can make this sort of more mm -hmm. effective, which is the mm -hmm. key thing, even more effective than a panel. Uh, but the other thing I think is the big stumbling block usually for why red light therapy is not so widely known yet. Um, it's because this one is portable. It's super easy to use and you can just take it with you. Um, our idea of, we often ask what's the best red light therapy device, right? And I'm sure you have maybe friends who are asking you. Uh, the best red light therapy device is the one you use the most. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you use it cumulatively, you get better effects, like integrating it into your daily routine. Totally. So 
you know, what can often happen if you can get, you can all go gung ho on the research and you install this like huge body panel and everything and you, and you go all in on that. Um, maybe it's hard to maintain. Maybe it's hard to integrate in a busy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, the portability piece is huge. You can just be laying in your bed, <clears throat> sitting around on the couch, you can bring it with you somewhere. So that's, that's huge. And that's really good to know about the, the covers on there, like making it safe for you to have it right on the skin. I like that. I'm wondering if, um, for my sciencey nerd people out there who I know they're like curious, can you talk a little bit more about like what actually happens in the body when we're exposed to red light or near infrared light? Yeah, certainly. And you had a, I would, you had a show, uh, in 22, I think you had Ari Witten on the show. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing episode on mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't pretend to speak anywhere near his depth mm -hmm. of expertise. Um, but it was really, uh, that was an interesting, uh, interesting episode to highlight what is the main mechanism usually associated with red light therapy or this combination of wavelengths is that it uh, stimulates the mitochondria in your cells and that are basically, or mitochondria are, is often referred to as the energy generators, but they're really, mm -hmm. as Ari Witten uh, taught us as well, like they're really about your cellular defense and the energy production in your body, mm -hmm. right? So your body runs on kind of an energy currency that's like for the biohackers out there, ATP is sort of, that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the currency that's like uh, basically what your cells convert into mm -hmm. energy that gives it the energy it needs to do its job. Mm -hmm. And what does the body really do? Like all the time, it is repairing, recycling. It is always trying to like, um, you know, recover from whatever stress you put on it, etc. So it's already doing that. But when you shine near infrared light of a certain dosage on it, it stimulates those mitochondria to actually generate much more energy, like more quickly. So it makes them more effective at doing what they already do. That's sort of at a systemic level. Like when you put, you know, a flex beam on your stomach, you are kind of kickstarting the mitochondrial activity and the energy in those cells that where you are targeting it. And all of that is also spreading through the body. It doesn't stay locally. You're literally, you know, you're charging one part, but that energy also flows to your whole, whole body. Uh, that's the sort of cellular thing that distinguishes this from, you know, a heat pad or something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in in addition to this, there's also uh, increased blood flow, increased oxygenation in the blood. There's release of a lot of uh, like pain receptors and hormones, like pain soothing hormones. So there's a sort of a cascade of different physiological effects when you apply it in a targeted way, like in a particular area. You can uh, almost resonate with that on your sunset or sunrise example. Like if you imagine right now you're like on a beach and there's like it's like the whole sky is red. It's one of those mm -hmm. like epic sunsets. You can almost feel what you're talking about right there with like like the body. At least I can. It's like it feels like my whole body is just like in like bliss. Like no, you know, I can't imagine being like super stressed out and like anxious and <laughs> just like ah, like <laughs> So. No, it's it, totally. And once you know it, you also feel it even more, right? Mm -hmm. You just maybe didn't notice it before. So, uh, and I can and, attest, oh, sorry yeah. to cut you off again, uh, but I can attest like when, with my broken toe, like I was telling you, I, I have a little portable thing from Therisage because I haven't met you guys yet, but I wanted to give you guys a voice too, because I'm, I'm not really about like just aligning with a company. I just want people to, I want to get the word out. My job is to get the word out. That's like kind of the role I play in this humanity thing. I feel like is just sharing goodness, sharing goodness and people can choose as they may. But I had that. Um, and I, w with my broken toe, I felt, I mean, I definitely felt the, um, uh, what would I say? Pain relief aspect of it, which surprised me. Like I, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that benefit and I wasn't expecting it. And I was like, Hmm, this actually like is kind of making it feel better too. Interesting. So I, that's good to know that it's like, I didn't, I didn't realize that until you said that, that it's like releasing hormones that are kind of pain relieving. Yeah, it's actually, it has uh, impressive pain relief effects. Um, nice. And I think uh, it's often not marketed this way because you have to be careful around this like, yeah. about it and stuff like this for regulatory reasons. Mm -hmm. um, um, but it's it's really quite effective and powerful for a lot of people who struggle with, with pain as well. 
Um, yeah. So what happened to your toe? Like, how did it go? With, I just uh, stubbed it really bad. I was just making no? my kids bed and just stubbed it really bad. Looked down. It's all bent outwards. I was like, no, <laughs> but um, that's really yeah. bad. But I, I meant the recovery. With oh. red light. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, it's been about three to four weeks now and I'm still using it because I read, I, I was actually really impressed with some of the bone healing research that I was reading. I got pretty nerdy on it since, you know, it was personal and there was a lot of, um, great information about like positive results on osteoblasts, which really don't come in till about three to four weeks after I was still putting it on there the whole time. Anyway, <laughs> I'm like, this right. can't hurt. If it's increasing ATP, that that can never be a bad thing. If you're injured, <laughs> like in, in my opinion, like I'm just yeah. increase enhancing my body's ability to do what it needs to do by feeding it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I can't even tell it's broken anymore. So, so far, so good. I, okay, so I think, cool. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can so map recovery it. journey. So something we're working on is like there are benchmarks for how long a certain kind of injury takes to heal. Right. Yeah. And try to document it with, you know, somebody using FlexBeam for the recovery that you'd like to actually visualize how much shorter it gets or like how quicker the recovery gets, these mm -hmm. kinds of things. So mm -hmm. um, that's for the self-experimentation part, I guess, next time you stub your toe. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll use no red light or near infrared and see how long that takes. <laughs> well, you stub two toes and you do red light on one and nothing on the other. Coach breaks toe on purpose to compare <laughs> efficacy of near infrared and <laughs> red light. Oh, we could use you on your PR team. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, super helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> now we have a little bit of time. And by the way, thank you so much. I uh, just want to say guys that Bjorn is tuning in all the way from Norway, pretty late in the evening pretty late. And I know you're all about circadian rhythm. Um, so I, so thank you. And I was wondering if you could My hit pleasure. that little piece yeah. of circadian rhythm in terms of using these devices, both, you know, with, at wake up time and bedtime. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the unanticipated sort of discoveries we've made with this first version. So it's, we kind of designed it for, you know, a wrap around the elbow or the knee or like to be flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that started creeping up in use cases and, and so it was people who used it for sleep or like trying to use it just sort of over the chest or, uh, on like stomach or low back or something as a calming thing, 10 minutes before sleep, and then report it on their aura ring metrics that they got more deep sleep and that they, you know, got rejuvenated. So we started looking into this more and it's actually something that we have in mind for developing the next version as well to focus more on this but there is a there seems to be a real connection uh to inducing sleep which i'm guessing best guessing from what we've seen so far and what we know of the research is that it has something to do with the hermetic stress that you're giving at a relatively low level but still is a sort of a light stress response that actually induces some sort of calmness after yeah uh, and that helps people uh sleep for the most part the other part that it's like that's connected to this has to do with melatonin production. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the recent discoveries in the in the science on this actually is that there is a different type of melatonin. Like we know about the melatonin as the sleep hormone that is like produced by the pineal gland. There is actually a subcellular form of melatonin that is all over our body. Uh, this is some really interesting research mm -hmm. for the nerdy ones out there to look into. Yeah. Uh, it's really uh I think it's going to change a bit of perspective of our circadian rhythm and how that works mm. hormonally. But anyway, that form of subcellular melatonin that's now being discovered is highly receptive to these frequencies of near infrared light, They're actually stimulated by it. Mm. So you can actually produce sort of more of this hormone in your body from, uh, from using this kind of either be exposed to, you know, a nice sunrise sunset all the time, or to have a device like this. Like these frequencies seem to induce something. Uh, so there are some some benefits that we've seen from using it also like in the morning and then the evening, for example, for some uh, people, it helps to wake up the body. If you expose mm -hmm. it to red light early in the morning, if you can't go outside, for example, mm -hmm. then it's a way to set the circadian rhythm for the day because this is kind of on the same spectrum um, yeah. of frequencies you would get from a sunrise. So you can kind of mimic a little bit of the effect of the sunrise and the sunset um, by using a device like this. Yeah. 
That's I, I live in Hawaii on the east side of the island. So the sunrise is pretty awesome outside of my window here behind me. And yeah. it's so red and orange. I mean, if you like, I'm deeply familiar with it because I see it every morning. I get up a little before the sunrise and it's just, it's just this vivid. I mean, it's not like a, you know, oh, the sky is kind of, at least here it's, it's like, it feels like red light. You know what I mean? It is like this vivid, yeah. like, and, um, it giant makes cosmic perfect. ball yeah, of energy yeah like yeah it. it makes sense that that would be part of our if we because i i always look at like the optimal human state as we actually live out there <laughs> you know we yeah. just built some really cool shelters here so we're a little removed that's why i like bio no, i like that yeah and this, i like that no. yeah because it's just helping us bring aspects of nature into our lives because we're not going to go live outside i'm not going to go live in my backyard my shelter is too oh. nice. You know, yeah. I like yeah. it in here. I got a refrigerator and like a bed, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, um, yeah, I, it makes perfect sense to me based off seeing that sunrise every single morning that like starting your day out like that would definitely mimic nature if we were to be living outside. And yeah. I definitely have experienced myself like red light at night. If none of you guys have tried that. And that's why these portable things are really nice because you can just like put them, use them right in bed they def I definitely noticed that effect of that calming, like soothing, like effect of it. So yeah, it's just another benefit. Yeah, it's a it's a cool one. And uh, there is a, a story, it may be apocryphal, but I've been told by scholars about this that in Sanskrit, the original yoga uh, is was actually supposed to be done at sunrise. So there was a link between okay. like you wanted to go out and do your yoga outside actually when the sun was at its most red because it was known to have a sort of a healing power. Like that, that it was sense. especially healing to do it at that hour. <laughs> that right? makes sense. Um, and For the sure. sun salutation was invented later, but the whole idea of getting up with the sun and stuff is supposedly embedded in, in yoga tradition as well. But it's an ancient knowledge that we may just have lost kind of because our minds are focused on all kinds of other stuff that we've been. Yeah to focus on well it totally makes sense um here in hawaii i i i call this the most conducive to healthy circadian rhythm place in the world because when it gets dark it gets dark like it is just like pitch black like you're just kind of like okay it's over you go from feeling like it's like 5 30 to like it feels like it's 10 30 all of a sudden you're like it is late so it kind of lulls you to sleep and then we have chickens and roosters running around everywhere in hawaii and so those roosters start going before the sun and so even if I wanted to sleep in, I think it would be very difficult to. And mm -hmm. so I'm always up before sunrise. Mm -hmm. And I call that period of like right just before and then like seeing it come up. I, it's like my like the witching hour or something. I'm like, I'm telling you, it is a highly spiritual time. Like it is by far the most powerful moment of my day, which then motivates me to go to bed so that I can like experience it again. It's that good. So I that doesn't surprise cool. me at all because that's been my yeah. experience. <laughs> no, but you live in an amazing place for that too. So uh yeah. Yeah. I'm very fortunate. I don't know how long it'll be, but hopefully as long as possible. Um, speaking of that, uh, we need to let you go to bed. Thank you for staying <laughs> up late yeah. and joining us and telling us about Flexbeam. And by the way, guys, um, you can get $60 off a Flexbeam device if you use my coupon code Coach Tara. So we'll link that up. Um, any last words? Any last we didn't get into all the philosophical stuff, so you guys will just have to go watch them on YouTube. It's pretty, it's pretty deep. I'll, I'll link some of them for you guys so you can check it out. <laughs> no, thanks. It's a pleasure. I was looking forward to this conversation, and uh, let's just say you didn't make me tired. So that's uh, uh, thanks. Yeah, I'll sit up for a while <laughs> and enjoy. And if you ever want to change your circadian rhythm or test it out, uh, move to the north in a place like Norway in winter, and you'll sleep for ten hours straight in, in the night because it's so dark. That makes sense. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, that's probably what I'm going to do next, but it was a pleasure. And, uh, thank you for bringing the word out. I love the work that you do. Um, you. so keep doing it. Thank Peace. you. Likewise. <laughs>